What's going on, everybody? Today is 11 6 2022. This is your weekly market prep. As we discuss key levels, market moving events, areas of interest, things that we should be on the lookout to absolutely crush it this week. Let's get the preliminaries out the way. Hey, 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 if you're new to who I am, if you're new to the channel and you want to find someone who's actually trading the right way, who's consistent and who's crushing this thing, listen, you can come into the Wealth Wells. Click the link somewhere attached to this video. Tell your friends about me and come on into our Discord. As long as you abide by the rules, you're okay. Somewhere on this page or in here, you'll find a link to come into the Wealth Wells Discord. You can click the link down below or somewhere and come into the Discord. First thing you should do is spend some time reading the testimonials. Real people, real lives, real accounts being changed period. The proof is in the pudding. You can check it out right here. Scores and scores, pages of this stuff. You could just scroll down and see people coming out for the first time, green months, and then six, seven weeks, green weeks, other folks hitting five figures, uh, five figure days for their first time, folks making money back that they lost in other discords in this discord. Man, it's awesome to be alive, isn't it? So come into discord, find out all the cool stuff. Then you can jump in here after you click the rules, uh, read the rules. You got to abide by the rules for sure. Then you can, uh, you know, select the right roles and then you can check out my schedule. If you want to trade with me, you want to see how good this guy really is. Do I put my money where my mouth is? All of that jazz. Absolutely. You can come in here Mondays and Fridays. This will change next year for sure. I'm going to spend more time with only the killer wells, people in the private channels, tier three access. However, Mondays and Fridays, you can come into the discord and you can trade with me live for the morning session, and you can get some pre-market prep in there as well, okay? After that, you can jump into the spy only options room where we absolutely dominated last week. Let's see here. All right, so official numbers will be released later on tonight, but to end of the day, uh, 10 for 10. The morning session, six for six, no losses, 50% or 30% or 110% or we traded this thing up, down, and sideways. Absolutely nice job. Absolutely crushed it. Everyone in the Discord, everyone in the Killer Wells, great job for crushing it as well. Going all the way to the bank. Happy for you guys. Money dance. All right. So let's get down to business. What can we look forward to this week? Well, let's see here. Earlier, I think yesterday, Fluffmeister posted. Let's see here. Fluffmeister posted. What? What? Oh, it was here actually. I think. What channel was that in? Fluffmeister. Oh, it was in the Killer Wells. Fluffmeister posted. All right. Our earnings for this week. So you might have your eye on some earnings. I do not do earnings plays necessarily, but I will call out some after earnings plays for the killer wells. The swing trades happen in the private channel. And once the market settles, we do them on Mondays and Tuesdays. We click pump them out like clockwork. No problem. As the market begins to settle, we'll, uh, we'll pump them out. I, I try to stay away from things that uh, areas where volatility can be introduced into the market. And uh, so that people don't get caught in those trades. Otherwise, we just wait until the setup happens. Then we take it. Boom, no problem. So this week, there's a couple. Hospitality should be doing real nice. Um, some folks are looking at Walt Disney. And I am watching Oxy. And there's a few others. I'll release those inside the Killer Wells. Um, I expect energy, obviously oil, to do well. That's not a problem. All right, some of these. I expect, um, I expect uh, hospitality to show up. Um, and there's a few others. So TripAdvisor down there, and there's a few others here. We'll talk about those inside of, um, inside of the, um, uh, Killer Wells private channel, but, uh, all in all, you know, there, 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 there aren't a lot of market movers here. Not a lot. There's some sector impactors, I call them, but not a lot of market movers, a lot of, um, you know, hospitality up in there. So we'll, we'll be watching those and, you know, trade it accordingly. But this is what the, the earnings looks like for the week. So we'll keep our eye, our finger on the pulse of that. Okay. And um, now let's take a look at the week and see what the week holds for us. All right. So let's take a look at Monday. Okay. So this is what your global outlook looks like. All right. That's why I show this. So you can get an idea of what um, the global outlook and things that can move global markets, because they're certainly going to certainly going to to impact us. But Monday, we, we've got some Fed members bumping their gums. So you know, got to watch out for that 3.40, 3.40, and 6 p.m. So 6 p.m. won't too much matter for us. Uh, but 3.40, 3.40, uh, that'll be interesting to the backside of the day. Consumer credit report coming out at 3 p.m. Um, and you know, we just want to keep our eye on a couple of things. That's the 
that's really the only news that's coming up for um for Monday, right? For Monday. So let's see here. Tuesday, all right? Uh, stateside, that is. That's all that's coming up stateside, right? Tuesday. All right. Tuesday, pretty much open day. Small business optimization index coming out Tuesday. So we'll be looking at that. That's going to be dropping around uh, early morning, actually, 6 a.m. That'll be dropping. And pretty much open day after that, as you can see, right? We got some elections happening, right? For sure. All right. You can clearly see there. Um, and that's it. Okay. But uh, globally, you can see there, there are some impacting events that are happening globally. But uh, we're going to just focus on state side. All right. Wednesday, Fed member talking. Uh, Barkin's going to be talking as well. We got, of, of course, the petrol report coming out at wholesale inventories at 10 a.m. All right. But look at what we have on Thursday. CPI data, jobless claims, 830, baby. That could introduce some nice volatility into the market. And as that, uh, as we, you know, approach that, that time frame, I'll discuss with you the layout and what my expectations are based on historical data and experience in the market. And then throughout the day, we've got some Fed members talking. So we'll have a dicey day then the Fed balance sheet at 4.30 backside of the day. We're going to have an interesting. And then we got consumer sentiment on Friday at 10 a.m. All right. Those are the market moving events that we can look forward to. Write those down, make a note, pause the video, come back, watch it, whatever you need to do. All right. There are three things there are three things that move the market. I'm going to give you a little bit of training right now. Come into the Discord. All right. You don't, you know, you, you just peruse. And I want you to watch. You can go into the video trainings tab. This is where I put my videos. I do not post unless I got something to say. Right. I'm not, I, I should post more. My team is telling me, you know, you got to post more, blah, blah, blah. All right. Whatever. I'll get to that in, in it soon. But when, when questions are asked or when there, there needs to be some explanation, then I'll, I'll post. There's only three indicators you need. The things that we discuss center around those three indicators, and that's all we need. If you're not coming out of the day six for six or five of six or 10 for 10 or nine of 10 wins, one loss, then you, you, need to, you need to drill down and you need to focus on what moves the market. Stop using those stupid lagging indicators everywhere on your screen. I'm finding out that even some people, and I told you not to do it, even some of you guys, I'm holding you accountable. You can't let them go. You're trying to combine my system with these lagging indicators and I'm telling you it won't work, all right? Now, you don't have to listen to me. I'm just a good trader. I'm just a guy that has a, a winning system. You don't have to listen to me, but- when you do, you'll thank me later. All right. Watch all the videos at least two or three times. The game is there um, in the videos for sure. Okay. So that's the Discord. All right. Let's let's now let's get to let's get to the charts here. First of all, let's just let's just take a look at um let's just take a look at some some highlights from, from last week. So, you know, markets were higher alongside of news, central banks. Thinking about a change and you know in the in the pace tightening on uh, from a or really trying to get a gauge on a hawkish or dovish stance from JP right and uh, so traders sold puts they brought calls and uh, this thing rocketed went bullish you know kind of uh, found a base again and, and kept going up so uh, uh, most of the most of the action you know was due to was an expectation of what what the Fed would say right what the Fed would say so. The remainder of the week, uh, markets traded back and forth between the levels, right? And we we felt like, obviously, the 75 basis point was baked in. And, you know, we would just have a little early morning sell-off, which we took advantage of that Friday. We found a base around, uh, I think, that 3720-something area. Rockets reb uh, Markets rebounded back close to its open. So going into this week... What can we look forward to? All right, let's take a look here. Already made a trade here. Uh, got a nice 10 point move or so on this trade here at, right at the open. Uh, for those in the Discord, you guys know some of my plays, some of the setups based on volume, volatility, price action that I, I look at. That uh, I got an I got um, you know an indication to take this trade here. So took it, chipped around here, immediately was in profit, chipped around here, and then finally. Took profit, scaled out uh, 75% here, and then the rest here. Just uh, you know, a handful of contracts, not, not nothing too major. 
And uh, I'm currently not playing the fade because I am talking, but I, I should have played the fade. All right. But uh, here we go. All right. So going into, obviously, you can see, yep, there it is, that 372, 3719 area on the futures, uh, the corresponding areas on SPX and SPY. That's where we held. We dumped it there and then we held there and rocketed back up for the close. What do I expect this week? Well, going into CPI, which is 830, uh, historically, we chip. We're going to really chip. I am going to be risk off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If we get a move, it's going to be in the overnight session here into Monday. I'm going to say it again. If we get an aggressive move up or down, it's going to be in, it's going to be in the overnight session and moving into Monday. So what would I like to see? I would like to see us hold this area, maybe even come down to fours, you know, 3740, fill the gap, maybe run up into this area here and then chip around. So my ranges will be four, I'm sorry, three, I keep saying four, I don't know why. 3723.25 area, 3800 to the top side. I'd even bring it down to 38, uh, 3790 area right here. But this is my range for the week up until CPI. This is what I believe the markets would pin us in. What would change that? Geopolitical news, some, 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 you know, market moving news, even some earnings, something like that. Now, let's talk about some things happening uh, around the markets. Uh, coming up for this week, we already know who's going to be presenting presenting uh, earnings, and that that may or may not be the biggest uh, driver. But Apple this week announced that obviously they're going to cut their outlook for iPhone shipments on. China lockdown, uh, by the way, that China lockdown could also, give me a second here, could also, I, as we were having a nice conversation in Discord, could also affect, affect the Chinese numbers, the Asian numbers for uh, Walt Disney coming out of there. But uh, all in all, Apple is going to cut their production or their shipment on China lockdown. So we'll see how that news impacts Apple this week, which may add to timidity cautiousness, less risk, which would cause the market to range even tighter, certainly until we get a market moving event like CPI. We'll pay attention to CPI. Now, I don't do YOLOs. I don't do earnings like that. However, if you want to take, you know, look at look at your numbers and historicals on CPI and you want to try to trade that going into, you know, get into a position before, then that, that's going to be on you. But you'd have to have some good data to kind of get an idea of what you think inflation, right, is going to come in at, right? And uh, we're going to have a double whammy. So you got the CPI data coming out. You got jobless numbers, jobless claims coming out same time. So that's going to be some fireworks. So I think the market will be tight and wound up. If we do get a move, it'll likely be early, right? Early in the week on the Monday, right? To the upside or downside, one, one or the other. Let's say in over this overnight session, we come up, we fill the gap to 3771, and then we retreat down to 3723. Monday, we may be pulled, we may be pulled back up to this 375 area, and then up to this 378, 379, ultimately trying to touch that or double tap that 3800. But this is where I see us um, moving. What would get us out of this area? Market moving data. So um, I'm going to be risk off this week when we're in bears territory, which we're, we still are. I am going to trade uh, two to four. That's my trade frequency, two to four, a uh, little tighter stops, two to four trades per day, a little tighter stops. When we're cooking, going into uh, Wednesday, Thursday, really, then I'll be looking to up my frequency six to 10 uh, to capture the, the major moves and the volatility there, just like we did on Friday, right? So, so far we're holding this area. I'll stick around a little bit after this and uh, likely we'll trade um, some, some mix, execute some more futures trades. And so those are our key levels. Now, how does that translate to SPY? Let's take a look. SPY, here we are. Okay. So same areas that we, we kind of, I look to hold 371.62 to the upside 38, 37835. Th that's my overall range. With a with a with a, uh, I would say a mean of uh, this uh, our Friday close in this area of three seven five dot eighty one, um, and it all depends on how how our overnight session looks. By the way, so uh, this thesis that I am developing now, it will get shored up and firmed up 
top side of the day in our morning prep. But these are the areas of interest here that I am looking at on SPY um, that correspond to futures levels as well, All right? So that's what we're looking at. Um, that's what we're looking at, right? And that is uh, what the week is going to hold this week. So I'm just checking one or two other um, areas here where, um, you know, the market could potentially be moving uh, in a direction here. But uh, all in all, the big news right now will be uh, Apple going into Monday, seeing how that will impact the market and will allow that to um, push or pull us, right? And that'll be the added catalyst the market needs to break down past 3752 in the futures, this area here, or uh, continue to move up. All right. So you got the levels. You understand the thesis of tight action. Historically, it's been tight up to CPI. So if we're going to get a move again, Monday would be the best time historically to get that move. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, I do see risk off tight action, right? Um, for the announcement on Thursday. Okay. So keep that in mind, but, um, We'll, we'll allow the overnight action to dictate kind of uh, how foreign markets want to respond as well, okay? Remember, I trade three things, volume, volatility, price action. I don't need to review um, too much extra data. I do need to understand market sentiment for sure, geopolitical news for sure, bonds for sure, um, global events for sure, right? And everything we've talked about. Uh, but beside that, we stick to the charts. We stick to what the market is doing and we read the market live to uh to trade every single day so hey listen 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 if you want to have success on a daily basis like this six for six for the morning 10 for 10 out the day um unofficial numbers for the week i think i'm coming in somewhere around 30 and 6 30 and 6 i think i took six losses six l's 30 wins this week super green and then had a nice perfect day on friday uh, I'll release those numbers later today. Uh, reason why I've got to uh, review them is because I got a lot of futures trades too. So I got to tally those up too. But um, if you want to learn how to come out profitable every single day, come into the Wealth Wells, read the testimonials, and then just book some training. Sit down with me. All right. Let me show you. Get the goods. You don't believe me? Then read, listen to all these folks here. All right. Or you can go listen to, you know, some other jabroni online. That's up to you. All right, folks, I'll stick around for a little more, a little more time here, answer some questions from you. Um, am I expecting? All right, let's see here. I'll put those here so that folks can know I'm not talking to myself. Are you expecting election results to have much impact on the market? Not more than CPI data? No. All right. So oh, I see some folks. Oh, look at you, sir, trading the futures right now. If sir is in there. We also trade the futures inside the futures room we have for quite some time. Uh, so, you know, if you trade in the futures and you want call outs for that as well, um, let me give you a glimpse. Boom. So the Killer Wells, these are some of the Killer Wells private channels. There's audio in there. There's our own, our own private voice audio trainings in there. They have access to additional training as well that will be made available to them in the next couple of months. Futures, stock IPO, all that cool stuff. Meme stocks in there, swing trades, trade discussions, breakdown training, and a general trade channel for SPY. And uh, see some folks taking some futures trades as we speak, man. Sir, you should be listening to me. And they're taking some trades, man. Wait for me, man. <laughs> very nice. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Yep. Meta also cut some jobs as well. So that'll that'll pull down. Um, that'll impact the market as well. Let me see. Let me just check my news feed here. Um, uh, Meta could begin large scale layoffs this week. So we'll, we'll watch for that to come over the old uh, wire. That's an old phrase for you, old heads, the wire, right? That means the telephone, right? Nowadays, kids don't know what that means, but absolutely. So those two, Apple and Facebook, could provide a catalyst here for us to, uh, you know, I'd love, like I said, what I'd like to see, hold here, run up in the overnight session, and then just bam, and just chip. That's what I'd like to see. And I'm going to catch that though, right? I should be catching this. This is a strong move. This is a strong move. Clearly see off this level. And hey, guess what? Guess what? If you want to know, did I make these levels up? Did I just snap them there? No, just go look at the other weekly preps. You can see this level has been here for quite some time. So we trade these levels based on our information that we gain from the market. And we go take it to the bank every day. Look at that. Hit my target to the top side. 
I could have did that twice. See, this was my first entry here. One, boom. Second entry could have been same area. Man, very nice trade though. Very nice trade. So good call out there, Tweet. Good call out there. Yes, absolutely. We'll be watching Meta as well. Okay. All right. Yep, for sure, King. That's, that's what it's going for now. This little gap fill right here. And I'm going to take this trade. Give me a second here. Uh, I'm late to the trade, so I need to, I need to, hmm, I want to see how we respond to this area, but I am going to feel, I'm going to trade this. So let me just take a look here. Are we still live? We are still live. All right. Let me focus. P Matt says he's in. P Matt, you're in the wrong channel, man. It's a futures trade, man. Dobby, get over there in the right channel. <laughs> Let's get this thing together. I know sir is in it. I already knew it. I already knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Very nice job, guys. Very nice job. Very nice. Okay, any, any other questions, guys? I'll stick around for another couple of minutes. Allow the general public to, to see what we do on a regular, regular day. I love this stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Got some cool things coming. Killer Wells. Woo-wee. We got some cool things coming this week. We'll talk about it in the private channels. Excellent things coming. Man, what a nice trade. What a nice trade. Mm-hmm. Good, 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 good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <laughs> Very nice, Paul. Yeah, you know it. That's a nice move, right? Okay, guys, so let me see who's got something here. Do you use Ninja, do you use Ninja Trader to trade futures? I absolutely do, Sonny. Yes, yes, I do. I do, I do, I do. I trade. And there's some other applications I use as well, but my one that I like very nicely is the uh, ATM feature on Ninja Trader, and you IBK or other others have it as well. But yes, I use Ninja Trader. So, and don't worry, I'll do some. We'll talk about the trail stops. Don't worry about that. All of that will oh oh will come this week as well. All right, folks, I'm not going to draw this out. I'm going to get into the channel and trade this thing. Eight fifty. 850, we are in the spy only options room right here to crush it. And we're going to crush it Monday. We're coming out the day green. All right. Review your charts, review your levels, put the work in, folks. Put yourself on a plan. All right. This is going to take some time for you. Now, it doesn't have to take forever, but give yourself a reasonable amount of time to improve. Fall in love with the process of becoming great and you'll never be average. Work on the craft. Stop hopping around to every YouTube video and every Discord trying to piece things together. You don't have to stay in this Discord. And you don't have to take training from me, but you will never get good if you keep trying to piece things together. On the contrary, you will become an elite trader if you learn how the market works, the underlying fabric, and stop trying to dumb it down to a stupid strategy or some type of cheat code. Doesn't work that way. You have to actually have some skills to do this the right way. We can help you. All right, guys, listen, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you right here in the Spy Only Options room tomorrow, 8.50 to crush this thing. If you show up, you'll go up. ADW signing out.